Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing well. For anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. And in today's episode, we're going to be going over my personal VGC Series 8 tier list for all of the restricted Pokemon that we're going to have access to when the rules officially start um, tomorrow, which will be the 1st of February, and we'll have access to all these new toys to play with. So I thought prior to going into the, the new rules, it'll be fun to do a tier list. And I did shout out on the last video, if anyone was interested to see this video, then let me know and we got a great response from that so a big shout out to all and everyone that responded asking for this tier list and i hope you enjoy it at the baseline of it it's going to be great to go through this with you i uh, give you my opinions on what the best and what the worst pokemon in my opinion are going into series 8 and obviously things will change it'll be nice to look back in a few weeks time to see how close we were to this and if you strongly or you know disagree or agree with any of the opinions that i have do leave a comment down below i'm really interested to hear your thoughts on what you think will be the best Pokemon going into the format before it officially starts and what some of the worst ones are. So definitely leave your comments down below. I'd love to hear them. And uh, without further ado, let's jump in to a tier list. I've got them all in chronological order. So we'll go through from Generation 1, the OG, Mewtwo, uh, right the way through to our new Sword and Shield restricted. So I guess there's no better place to start than that powerful restricted, the original one, which is uh, the Psychic type Mewtwo. It's got a base 130. 30 speed stats so right off the bat that is something really good you know you're looking at that you're thinking it's going to outspeed the majority of the other restricted it's going to outspeed most of the things in the format but it has got the psychic type which i think does kind of uh deter it a little bit from being a very top tier pokemon uh, all the dark types in the format as well give it a hard time if we jump over to showdown we can take a quick look at Mewtwo's overall base stats which aren't too bad actually you know if you look at the spread the 100 and 6 HP stat with 90 and 90 defenses they aren't too shabby uh, but for restricted it's not got the best defenses it's got phenomenal uh, special attack stat and phenomenal speed but you're kind of really looking at a restricted Pokemon like this is more it feels more like a glass cannon although it will take hits but it's I, I always tend to put it into the, uh, that more glass cannon sort of Pokemon but I do feel with the uh, the resurgence of darks steals are kind of dominating the format at the minute which makes it even more difficult to really utilize those stab psychic type attacks and then the dark types that are there uh, really do hinder the ability for Mewtwo to do well and you've got things like Regieleki that can really like just take away that speed advantage very quickly I think Mewtwo is going to find it very difficult to perform in this format it has got access to things like Trick Room though so you know it has got access to some nice support moves but whether or not you want to go down that route with Mewtwo but I don't know if it's really going to do too well so I'm going to start off with Mewtwo I think we'll go into the C tier with Mewtwo because I don't see it being used too much i don't really see it having too much of an impact in the format and that is down to the faster ghost threats in this format and uh, we'll get into some of those bigger threats as we go forward but for mewtwo in a, a format that is full of other very strong restricted i don't think it's quite up there with the other ones so that is where i'm going to leave mewtwo for now and we'll move on to our generation two restricteds, which one of them definitely is a lot stronger than Mewtwo, and that is Ho-Oh. Now, Ho-Oh is a phenomenal Pokemon, flying fire type, got incredible stats across the board. If we get rid of Mewtwo for a moment, we can uh, take a look at Ho-Oh. So yeah, always loved Ho-Oh. With actually access now to the ability patch in Sword and Shield, we can access the regenerate ability freely, so that's really good. And uh, obviously that recovers a third of your health when you switch out which is phenomenal for something like ho -Oh that has that really good defensive bulk and amazing stats across the board i mean you look at that uh, base 154 special defensive stat if you pair that up with something like an intimidate user to just bolster those defenses a little bit and that 106 hp stat that's a very very good amount of bulk obviously going to have that four times weakness to to rock but i don't know outside of landerous theory and Maybe going to see G Max Colossal as well. Maybe Gigalith. Maybe Gigalith and Stack Attacker. 
Outside of the, that kind of cohort group of uh, Pokemon, you're not going to see too many rock type Pokemon. And even against something like Regieleki, because of that 154 base special defense, you're not going to worry too much, especially if you're Dynamax and Hot or for dealing with it. And uh, you get some incredible attacking options as well. You get Sacred Fire, which is obviously great for when you're not maxed. You can burn your opponents. So you've got that 50% burn chance, which is amazing. And you've got access to Max Airstream and Brave Bird, which is incredible and coming off that base 130 attack stat is amazing it still has access to recovery which is another nice option to have i think it has lost access to tailwind though which is something that it did rely on and and give your other Pokemon quite a bit of support with. Uh, but you do have the Max Airstream, which is quite nice. Uh, you've got lots of different coverage moves here. You know, you can go uh, Earthquake, which is a really nice option. You know, you've got the Max uh, Quake there that you can take advantage of. So it does have a lot of versatility. I think ho -Oh is generally a very good Pokemon. How good it is in the, the grand scheme of things, I don't know. I probably put it in tier B, I think. Tier B is where I probably put because I think it's got the utility there with Max Airstream. It's got the fire typing as well. And we mentioned a little bit earlier about how dominant steel types are in this format. So having the ability to hit those steel types with uh, super effective damage is really invaluable in this format. And then having that general bulk on top of that uh, really does help out. You can always go lightning rod user. Maybe that gives you the support there and screen support from something like Grimmsnarl help out a bunch with Ho-O. And we might change things up as we go, but we'll uh, we'll put Ho-O in tier B. We'll move on to its counterpart from generation two, which is Lugia. Lugia, the flying and psychic type it has a great speed stat as well so um not like your other restricted base 110 speed stat which is pretty amazing does get access to its hidden ability as well like most of the restricteds now and it does have access to multi-scale so when it's full hp any super effective attacks are cut in half which is really useful uh it just makes it even more of a tank than it is i mean look at its its defenses are incredible you've got 106 hp uh with 130 defense and 154 special defense combine that with multi-scale and you're looking at some a very strong Pokemon with that speed stat and the beauty about this speed stat is it really does give it the jump on the majority of the other restricteds in the format so you've got a very good Pokemon here you've got its signature move Aeroblast fortunately it is a special based attack um but you can go more predominantly special with it you get access to things like earth power it's kind of coverage moves are generally pretty good and it's got some nice options in calm mind you can go down that route if you want um, and lots of options help in hand could be a support in pokemon does it still get feather dance feather dance was always something 2010 lugia finished second in the world championships that year feather dance set it was always something that i played around with lots and it was something that i was planning on taking to world championships that year i got an invite but i didn't uh, get the paid invite unfortunately so i didn't end up going that year which was a little bit sad for me but lugia was definitely something that i was planning on playing that year obviously ray won in the end with his groudon team um but lugia did an amazing job in that championship so it does have the potential the only drawback i would say with lugia is again it falls into the category a bit like mewtwo uh where it's got all these new ghost types new dark types that have kind of popped up since then and really kind of make its life a little bit more difficult i think as well because of the 90 base uh attack stats across the board it's very underwhelming it doesn't really hit very hard you're going to need a weakness policy and even then with the weakness policy it's it's very underwhelming for what for what you would normally generally um, expect a restricted Pokemon to do so again Lugia I think I do like it as a Pokemon I think it's got a niche again but I don't think we're going to see too much of it I don't think it's going to have too much of an impact in the format and for that reason I'm going to dump you into category C right so we've got the first two gens out of the way we'll move on to generation three and this is where things get spicy my friends because we're going to be going over to some of my favorite restricted pokemon right now and i'm sure a lot of other people's re favorite restricteds we've got groudon up first now groudon is obviously a ground type it doesn't have that primal form that we've been used to in the 2016 2019 formats so it is that pure ground type it still has access to drought a uh, very strong Pokemon in general has a crazy high base defense, uh, 90 speed stat. 
um, which is kind of common for most restricted as we'll see as we go through this guide but you can see uh, 100 uh, HP and 140 base defense which is incredible and not got the best special defense in the world uh, 90 but it's not too bad overall and then that 150 base attack which is just incredible uh, it does get access to its signature move precipice blades as we've seen on the primal groudon very popular and a, just a generally great move i've got my own relationship with precipice blades as many of you will know from watching uh, episodes throughout the years with groudon primal groudon uh, i don't have the best time with this it has got a low accuracy so it's not the best accuracy but again it's just a super powerful move it's worth running on it for sure uh, the one drawback with Groudon is that obviously its special attack is not really that good. It's a bit like Lugia, so Lugia is very underwhelming and I think the same can be said for Groudon and it's even more worse for Groudon because you don't, with the fire type moves, you get Eruption which is boosted by your drought ability. You can bring the sun to the field, but again, Eruption doesn't have a same type attack bonus anymore like you would get with Primal Groudon. So you just not got that impact with that move as you would previously have. So it's not really something you would look at, at playing around with. You're mainly gonna be going for like the Rock Slide, Stone Edge there, Precipice Blades. Maybe Sword Stance is an option for you. Substitute's also a nice option but something along these lines or you could run maybe choice band drop the sword stance and protect and go along that route i like the choice band set myself i think it's very good um groudon's not bad in this format as a restricted i think it's potentially better than what a lot of people are maybe pegging it i don't like it myself i don't think i'll be playing very much groudon but i think it's got a place in the format it's got bit a bit more of a niche in the format for a lot of reasons. I think it, there's a lot of steel types who keep going on about this, a lot of steel types in the format. It's one of the predominant, probably better ground types that we've got access to. Gives you the utility of the sun as well. So you've got that and uh, Venusaur, uh, obviously with its chlorophyll ability, we've seen it in previous formats, paired with Torkoal and that drought ability, how strong Gigantamax Venusaur can be with Groudon support. I think it's very good. Um, I think it's a nice option as well. Gives you a nice matchup against a lot of things that are kind of dominating at the minute and uh, a really nice stab attack with Precipice Blades, especially if you're running the band set, you get it in, you need speed control with it. That's one of the things you need to either go Trick Room, you need to go Tailwind with it. And if you can do that and manipulate the kind of, uh, the speed control to your advantage with Groudon it's not something to underestimate from your opponents the one thing is the big drawback of it is obviously being a physical attacker it is very prone to intimidate abuse Groudon I do like but I think I would put it probably in tier oh I'm, I'm kind of torn I'd like to put it on the line between B and C but I think at the minute, I'm probably going to drop it into C. Yeah, so I'm going to drop Groudon here. I don't think it's going to have as much impact in the format as something like ho or -Oh could potentially have. But I don't think it's bad enough to drop down to D. And I would say it's more marginally on the line between B and C rather than sitting at C. So top of C, I think, is not a bad place for it. And we'll move on to its counterpart, Kyoga, which is... One of my favorite restricteds ever. Uh, I remember using it 2010 to get my first invite that year, which was amazing to the World Championships. Finished third in the UK Nats that year, which was just an incredible experience altogether. Still re remember it very fondly. And uh, for that reason, Kyoga just carried me through that tournament. It was amazing Pokemon. And ever since then, um, it's been one of my favorite Pokemon to, to use and uh, brings that water to the, uh, to the table with its drizzle ability, uh, has access to an incredible move in water spout and we'll have a look at its its uh, stats and spreads and things like that got an amazing special defense 100 hp not so good defense but the defense isn't something that really worries you too much in this format i think because of intimidate support and it, the prevalence of intimidate you know we've got access to a lot of good intimidate users uh, so you can really take advantage of that but you've got one of the most powerful attacks in the game which is then boosted by the drizzle ability coming off a 150 base special attack which is just nuts and i mean you are even resisted things are taking huge chunks from water spout like you're going to be doing 50 percent to even things that resist water spout at full power which is just incredible so kyoga very good we've seen it kind of picking up a lot of use early on in the format with tornadus it's a very popular combination from previous formats 
and I think it's just generally a very good Pokemon indeed. So I would actually put Kyogre up into, I don't know if I would go S tier because I think it can be a Pokemon that can just win you games outright. And I think the, the idea of it having the ability to Dynamax as well, where you can utilize Water Spout up until the point where Water Spout is probably not the best option anymore, rather than going for Origin Pulse, then you can max. And then you can start throwing out max geysers, which are, again, just as powerful, just ridiculously powerful. I think I would put Kyogre in S tier. It's got a lot harder of a time in this format. I'm not going to deny that. Regieleki, Rillaboom, Cartana are your three kind of staple checks to Kyogre in this format. But they're Pokemon that you can deal with. And I think as we see the format develop, I think we're going to see players getting smarter with how to deal with those threats directly. And Kyogre may start to become more of a late game Pokemon rather than an early game Pokemon that we're seeing at the minute. Remove the threats to it and then get it in late game next to something with speed control and then just absolutely obliterate what's out on the field. Because there aren't many things in this format that aren't going to take huge damage from a full power water spout. So for that reason, I am going to put... It's our first S tier Pokemon. I'm going to put Kyogre up into S tier. Okay, moving on to Rayquaza, another one of my favorite Pokemon. Unfortunately, it doesn't have its Mega in this format, or fortunately, because if it did, it would be broken. Um, but Rayquaza, Dragonfly in type, got a nice speed, uh, base speed stat. Add speeds a majority of the common uh, restricteds with a 95. Uh, base speed which is great and um, it's uh, a nice speed stat and uh, even though it doesn't get its mega uh, form it does get access to its signature move a dragon ascent which is 120 base a uh, flying type attack so it gets access to a really nice attack that can be uh, max airstream gets airlock as well which ignores any effects of weather which is useful against things like Kyogre uh, things like Groudon, Torkoal and uh, the abusers like Venusaur that would take advantage of those weathers um, so so yeah, generally airlock a very good ability. Stats are good across the board. Defenses are a little bit like Mewtwo's, I would say. So it falls into that kind of very hard hitting glass cannon sort of restricted in a way where it's not going to be able to take a lot of hits. Um, it's going to be something you need to protect very well. We've seen in the past Mega Rayquaza go with something like Assault Vest. So that could definitely be an option in this one. Focus Sash as well could uh, also be something that you kind of look at using. Um, it does get access to nice options like Extreme Speed, uh, Sword Stands, but you don't need to go down um, a physical route because if you look at the special attack, 150 base special attack, which is amazing, probably not going to use Dragon Ascent in that case, but you do have options for things like Air Slash, you've got things like uh, Earth Power as well, which is a nice option. Um, you've got very good spread attacks. You've got Fire, you've got Hurricane that you can utilize if you don't want to use the, uh, the Dragon Ascent and uh, that gets around any drops when you're not in a Dynamax form. So yeah, really versatile Pokemon, got lots of options and I think Rayquaza, it does have a place. It's a bit more of a niche. I don't know where to really put it because I generally don't like... I'm going to move Mewtwo behind Lugia because I feel like Lugia is better than Mewtwo and I feel like I would probably say Rayquaza is probably, uh, I'd say tying with Mewtwo. I'm going to put it into C. I don't see it having too much of an impact in this format. I think it's going to have a rough time against uh, a lot of other threats in this format. You know, like Regieleki, going to give it a hard time. You do have a way to hit it hard, but you're going to need speed control support to help it out, which you're going to need with predominantly all of these Pokemon. And it's not a Pokemon that I see restricted that I could see really dominating games you know it's not going to be something like Kyogre where it's going to come in and just and just wreck stuff yeah so Palkia up next now Palkia is an incredible Pokemon Palkia dragon and water type one of the best typings I think combinations in the game um, it has access to pressure it has access to telepathy which is its hidden ability which is amazing it's got incredible stats across the board, 90 HP, 100 defense, 120 special defense, combined with the typing water dragon, incredible and incredible speed stat of 100, which is not generally better than most of the other restricteds in the format, uh, namely Xerneas and Iveltal and uh, 150 special attack stat and 120 attack stat. I don't know if you'd want to go down that route, but the, the 150 special attack stat is, is incredible. Not got the best coverage, but got decent coverage. You've got things like Aurora Sphere, which is obviously a fighting type stab, which is useful. Blizzard, 
it does get access to all its dragon type attacks but spatial ren is going to be its kind of signature attack which is always nice to to be able to rely on it's got um, a good base 100 attack start there so if you're going max then it's it's useful earth power it's got access to fire coverage water coverage obviously for that other stab which is something that you can use quite nicely again power gem it gets uh thunder uh, and it gets access to Trick Room, which we've seen in the past and, and used as an option. So it is a fast Pokemon, but it can utilize Trick Room as well. So it can help you uh, counteract Trick Room, reverse it yourself, or uh, set it up for yourself if you're in a, an awkward position. But I think generally, you know, Palkia is an incredible Pokemon. Commonly seeing it early on in this format, running Assault Vest, which makes it even more difficult to deal with. And if you're using it to deal with something like Kyogre, then you're going to have a really nice time. Kyogre is going to really struggle to do anything to Palkia. It can't hit it for uh, good damage with Water Spout. It's going to struggle to hit it without Thunder. And even with Thunder, if you've got the Assault Vest on it, it's, you know, it's neutral damage. It's not going to be doing enough and you're going to be able to really tank Kyogre in return. Generally, I think it's a very good Pokemon. And when you look at the format on a whole, the lack of kind of fairy types that are being suppressed by these steels that are kind of dominating at the minute. I think the dragons are having a lot easier of a time in the format than you would have said previously. Now, this might be... A bit of a surprise to you all, but I'm going to chuck Palkia into S tier because I think it's a Pokemon in its own right that can win games. I think with its speed stat, its, its attack power, I think its utility to come in, soak up damage, slow things down. I think honestly, it's probably one of the best restricted Pokemon that we've got access to. And that's because fairy types aren't having the best time in this format. One of the issues obviously with Palkia is it's gonna you're gonna have to face a lot of tapu finny but you can easily check tapu finny with something like rillaboom something like cartana something like regieleki the pair all pair very nicely with palkia you know so that check can be done quite easily palkia not going to be the easiest pokemon to deal with as well and when you're relying on something like maybe eveltal that you would normally look to to uh, kind of weaken this sort of pokemon um or some of the other pokemon that you kind of see snarl with like entai uh incineroar they're not going to want to sit in front of a Palkia. Even anti speed time with it, it's pretty risky, you know, especially if you see Palkia Max. So for that reason, I am going to throw Palkia into the S tier. I think it's an incredible Pokemon. I think standalone, if we're only using one restricted, I think it's going to be a very good one. It's definitely one that I think everyone should experiment with. Now we'll move on to the counterpart for its generation in Dialga. Now Dialga is definitely one of my favorite Pokemon ever all time restricted steel dragon type again a bit like it's uh brethren palkia has access to pressure and telepathy telepathy incredible especially if you've got something like lander is sitting next to it you can earthquake all day long and not worry about taking any damage yourself so it's uh kind of like a pseudo flying levitate type as well with that ability uh steel dragon is an incredible typing got some excellent coverage moves flash cannon great earth power amazing it's got access to thunder thunderbolt it's got access to ice beam it's got access to aurora sphere it's got everything aurora real aurora real no we want aurora sphere and it's got access to trick room as well which you know 90 base speed they can take advantage of that a little bit better than uh Palkia um and incredible defenses combined with that dragon and steel typing you know 100 hp 120 defense, 100 special defense, so really nicely balanced across the board. And again, 150 base special attack. So we're seeing a lot of people slap maybe a life orb on this, a weakness policy on this. If this thing gets boosted up, it's going to be hitting like an absolute truck. And it's one of those Pokemon that's quite versatile. It can work in Trick Room and it can work in Tailwind. Uh, you've got the ability, like most of the other base 90 speed Pokemon, where you can hit that 140 speed stat in Tailwind, you're going to outspeed a Regieleki in pretty much everything in the format so and access to probably two of the best kind of Dynamax uh, moves in the game in Steel Spike and uh, Max Quake where you can boost your defenses um, it's just really good utility good offensively good defensively and good for your partner Pokemon as well you get like your partner Pokemon next to Dialga start boosting those defenses to just see out the rest of the game it's incredibly strong um, so for that reason Dialga in my opinion especially with that Steel type as well is just an absolute monster 
I'm going to throw Dialga into S tier, but I'm going to put it, I think, hmm, yeah, it's above Palkia, I think. And yeah, is it top? Is it top of the list? Yeah, I think, I think Dialga is top of the list. Okay, so that's how it's looking so far. I don't know how you agree with me, but we'll go on, we'll move on. Giratina, probably going to be pretty quick. Uh, Dragon Ghost type in, got some good stats good stats uh giratina had a lot of success in the 2010 format uh you saw it with choice scars pre predominantly early on in the format and um what was it uh shadow uh force is its uh two turn attack where it would disappear and then come back down the next turn do a lot of damage uh it has telepathy as well as pressure um Problem is, base 90 speed, it's got amazing defenses across the board, 150 base HP, 120 and 120 both across defenses. A bit whiffy on the attack side of things, but does have access to Calm Mind, seen that in the past do well. Um, but in general, I don't know if it's going to be very good. It's got nice support options, Will-O-Wisp obviously there. I think it's lost access to Tailwind now. It used to get access to that. But I mean, it's not a bad Pokemon. It gets Poltergeist as well, which is another option you can take advantage of, which is a bit more of a powerful uh, Ghost-type attack. But again, I think it falls into a category that that is very difficult to utilize with a lot of the dark uh, kind of threats that are around now like Tyranitar, Urshifu, uh, Eveltal all give it a really hard time and then you have faster ghost threats as well um, and probably faster and stronger dragon threats as well you know that you're going to see in the format I think it give uh, Giratina a really hard time you've got both forms here so you've got the uh, the origin form and you've got its uh, What's its other form? Or is it just a regular form, origin form here? But for the origin form, you do get Levitate as its ability. I don't know if it's really needed, and you have to kind of give up an item slot for that, so I don't know if you're going to see that. Its stats do vary a little bit. It gets a bit more attack stat, loses a bit more defense, um, keeps its speed. I think if it got a speed boost here, it'd be a bit more better of a utility Pokemon. Generally, across the board, it's pretty, it's pretty good, but... I don't really see it having much of an impact. We've seen those weakness policy teams do all right early on in the format, um, but I don't really see it doing super well. Um, and I don't, I think it's probably better than Mewtwo and Rayquaza. But uh, actually the origin form I probably put below because I think giving up an item slot for just Levitate isn't worth it when you haven't got a ground weakness anyway. It doesn't really matter uh, and you can get telepathy anyway so it doesn't yeah the the origin form actually i'm going to just dump down into d because it's just pointless i think <laughs> you just, just go with regular giratina so we'll move on to a generation five pokemon starting off with zekrom which is a dragon and electric type pokemon amazing pokemon one of my favorite ones from generation five zekrom great pokemon all together has the ability terrible which ignores it's a bit like uh mold breaker ignores opposing abilities which is really nice uh, so you can get around light and rod and things like that credible stats across the board in general again that base 90 speed is the one thing I think holds it back a little bit and um, I think yeah generally 150 uh, base attack it gets some nice uh, options bolt strike is an incredibly strong attack 20% chance to paralyze the target as well which is amazing coming off that base 150 attack stat which is just incredible get some nice coverage as well obviously you're going to be relying on dragon claw if you want to go down uh dragon coverage if you need that does get max airstream through fly which is a nice option if you do max it uh giving you speed control support for sure that's uh, always going to be useful and the typing is really nice as well you're going to resist things like regieleki which is amazing uh, you're going to be able to get your speed control up and uh, do huge damage to things like Kyogre and resist those water type attacks as well which is just phenomenal electric is a really nice typing i think zekrom's definitely got a place in the format um oh, where are we putting it i think i'm probably going to put it into b um because i do feel like it's got a place in the format for sure and i think there is a team out there a Zekrom team that can do very well in this format. So for that, I'm going to put it into to B tier because it does so well. Like if you support it well enough, it does so well against um, Kyogre. Can do well against the dragons as well. Obviously not so well against the Alga, but it can do so well against a lot of the threats in this format. 
like Ivalto, ho or you know, it's got it's got good utility, I think. I think. And yeah. Zekrom. Yeah, we'll leave him be. We'll leave him be. We might come back to that. We might come back to that. But I do, I really like Zekrom. Anytime I've ever played Zekrom, it's always surprised me. It's always been a very good, strong Pokemon. Um, and I think the electric type is pretty unique in this format for restricted. So for that reason, we'll put it in B. It's not got the best coverage overall, but I do think it's got a definite place in this format. And I can definitely see the Zekrom team been a thing in this format at least okay moving on to reshiram fire dragon uh another very good pokemon resh resh you ram turbo blaze same kind of ability as the uh the 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 uh zekrom's ability uh ignores it's like mold breaker ignores other abilities uh stats across the board very good again 90 base speed another hindrance as well but uh i think the typing dragon fire very good uh good defenses across the board and that 150 special attack is incredible got some really nice signature attacks blue flare being one of them which is just 130 base fire type attack special attack which is nice got dual wing beat so you could utilize airstream there it does get earth power which is very useful um so that's a nice option for sure loses tailwind unfortunately so that's not ideal for it but again it gets will-o-wisp another option you could take advantage of um i think it's got a place in the format i think it's typing is very good and i, I kind of come back to the typing of hot or here where i think it's 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 a usable pokemon um i'm definitely going to put it into b tier i think i think b it's good. I think actually I'm going to put Zekrom below ho -Oh because I think ho -Oh really generally, I think yeah. And I think um, Reshiram is probably better than Zekrom. In the, the hind in hindsight, I just think fire types have a better time in this format than electric. We've got good unrestricted electrics in this format, but not as many fire types that are going to be able to kind of perform as well in this format. And if you want a restricted, I think uh, for attack and steel types, these two are generally very good options. Curum up next. Uh, Curum. The problem is though, you can go, you can look at, um, you can look at its, its kind of, its fusion forms, and you just think, well, they're the same typing. They've got different options. They've got a better ability. So if you, you, you just wouldn't use Curum. I don't think. I think Curum's one of those Pokemon. We'll put it into D. I don't really need to explain too much about it because I think when there's other options out there. That are better than it you've got no reason to use curum in all honesty so we'll move quickly on to curum black curum black is again a, a dragon eyes type which is a bit of a hindrance it's got terra vault um this pokemon's moves and their effects ignored so it's a bit like uh reshiram zekrom's ability a bit like mold breaker um so it ignores abilities um it's got good stats across the board i mean 170 base attack is incredible like incredible and that 95 base speed that is the thing that sets it apart from a lot of the other restricteds in my opinion so i think for that reason it's very good uh but the typing is a hindrance for sure because defensively it's not that great typing it's good against things like kyoga you've got some incredible attacks here you get fusion bolt which is um incredibly good so you've got you don't get the electric stab even though it kind of portrays itself as an electric type it gets icicle sphere now so it gets an actual physical ice type attack as well this generation which is really nice um it does get fly though so you've got a nice option for speed control there uh with max airstream um and it's got the defenses to kind of carry it i feel uh, especially defensively it's not the strongest it's got a good hp stat though which is very useful um and for specific matchups against stuff like Kyogre, uh, Kyogre team is going to be very good. Curum Black, where are we putting you? I almost feel like Curum Black is better than, hmm, the, the thing is, I'd say it's better than Zekrom, but it doesn't have the stab that Zekrom has, and it has worse typing, so I'd maybe put Curum Black just in behind Zekrom, but for the speed, uh, I'd probably put it ahead. And I'd put it ahead of Reshiram, and I'd put it ahead of Ho-Oh almost, you know. But for general utility in the former, I don't know if it's if it it's definitely not better than Ho-Oh, but it may be better than Reshiram in the right team. I think it's got a place, you know, in the former. I really feel like like Kieran Black could have a place in this format. I think it's not going to have the easiest time, 
but I think of its speed stat, it's decent. Yeah, I think I think B. Higher end of B, I think, is where we're going to put it. I could be completely wrong on this. Okay, Curum White. I think is a better Pokemon in general. It's got 170 base special attack. It's got that 95 speed stat again, which is incredible. It's not worried about intimidate support. It's got the same typing, same ability, which is a little bit of a shame. Like if you saw Dragon, like Fire, Dragon, Electric there, I think these Pokemon, you wouldn't use Zekrom or Reshiram. You would just use these two. It's a it's a shame that the typing didn't change, in my opinion. Um, Obviously, weak to Fairy again, like all the other Dragons, but at the same time, you do get access to uh, Fusion Flare, which is another nice option. Um, You get access to Earth Power, which you can actually take advantage of here. Drawback is you don't really have the Flying Stab to take advantage of. Uh, as well as you would with Cure and Black. So, I don't know if it's as useful um, in that respect. You do get Icy Wind, which is nice. Stab, Ice type attack. Um, and you obviously can take advantage of Blizzard as well, which is just one of the things that you're always going to be uh, looking to do. But Ice and Fire coverage with, with Ground coverage as well, which is pretty nice, you know? Drawback is, obviously, it's type and it's going to be uh, susceptible to big... Uh, steel type attacks, but you can hit them back really hard. So if you can support Curum White well enough, it can be a real threat and it's going to actually do some just stupid damage. Does it get freeze dry now as well? That's uh, Yeah, it gets freeze dry now, which is, you know, another option I would say on there because then it gives you the option to hit things like Tapu Fini for super effective damage, Kyogre for super effective damage. Um, and that coverage there is actually really nice, like really nice. Um, you could even like Assault Vest this thing. Does it get Thunderbolt? No, I don't think it does. It doesn't get Thunderbolt, but it got some nice coverage in general. It's kind of something not to overlook and definitely not to underestimate. Um, I'm gonna stick Kurum White top of B right for now, because I just think it's definitely, it's a bit like Curum Black, where I think it's going to have a difficult time against the Steel types, but I think it's got enough about it to be able to have a, a huge impact in the format, for sure. Okay, moving on to Xerneas and Eveltal. Okay, well, Xerneas, we all know from previous formats. We've seen how dominant it has been in previous formats. It's a ridiculous Pokemon. Geomancy, signature kind of attack, boosts. You give it the power herb, one turn, um, one turn boost, special attack, speed, and special defense in one turn, plus two, which is just nuts. And then you're kind of relying on Moonblast, Dazzling Gleam, and that's pretty much the set that you're going to see. Now, I do think Xerneas is definitely taking a huge hit in this format, but I still think it's good. But the one drawback I would say, which we haven't pretty, pretty much delved into with a lot of the other restrictors up to now, but some of them we have, is the fact that it's all well and good getting your Geomancy up, right? And I think there's ways and there's teams out there that are going to support that super well. Double fake out, intimidate, support, redirection. There's lots of ways to help Xerneas set up. Dynamax definitely hinders it because you're going to take huge damage even if you get your Geomancy up. You're going to take huge damage anyway. So it means Xerneas isn't going to be as healthy as it normally would be. I still think there's a Xerneas team out there to be made and have a real impact in this format. My one drawback, my one gripe with Xerneas is once you Dynamax, you've got no utility to take advantage of any of those Dynamax moves. You're going to have, you're going to be setting the Misty Terrain. And that is it. You're going to get no benefit from any boosting attacks to your defense, to your special defense. And maybe that is something that players look at going forward because if you can boost further boost your defense like further boost your defense it gets such good coverage it gets flash cannon there's an option there i think i think we've got to look outside the scope of dazzling gleam moonblast i totally agree with the the argument that that's all you need because plus two fairy aura boost which is like 1.3 is it 1.3 or 1.2 uh 1.3 so it's like a life or boost just a free life or boost on top on all fairy type attacks. I get that you want to take advantage of those boosts and with those, you're gonna be chunking most things anyway. But if you could get some benefit out of Dynamaxing on top of it, I that's where I think the key to Xerneas really being successful in this format is. It has a great base speed of, a, of 99, which is just incredible, um, outspeeds most things. And with Geomancy, it's just amazing. I don't think it's S tier right now. 
I think it's A tier for sure though. I would definitely throw it into A tier because I think it's just, there's so many dragons in the format as well. Um, and it's, it's defenses overall are pretty decent because of that high HP stat that it's got. 95, 98, not bad. Great special attack. There's definitely flexibility with Xerneas. Um, I think for its typing, the ability to kind of set up so quickly is is one of the pluses about it for sure. So I'm going to put it in A for now. We're going to move on to Eveltal next, which is my boy Eveltal, a great Pokemon, uh, dark flying type, super bulky, got huge uh, HP stat again, uh, pretty much the same as Xerneas across the board, but uh, probably uh, a little bit maybe better defensive typing maybe i don't know but it does get access obviously oblivion wing is incredible and i think that the beauty about eveltal in this format is you can run a pure special uh eveltal gets dark aura which is the equivalent of fairy aura boosting dark type attacks by 1.3 so it's an incredibly strong pokemon got ground immunity as well it's got max airstream it's got uh, max darkness coming off a special attacker as well that's so useful because you're going to be weakening your pokemon on the stat that you're going to be hitting them on which is incredible it's incredibly bulky you can recover your health with that as well so it's got a lot of uh, um different coverage moves heat wave foul play it's got yeah i mean just you go down the list sucker punch tailwind it still gets access to which is very rare in this format so utility wise it's amazing offensively it's amazing i think it's one of the best pokemon in the format uh restricted wise um i'm gonna give you my honest opinion on that i've always liked eveltal but i think it's just got better with the ability to dynamax i think you need to get the team build right with eveltal uh, i think there's some specific things that you need to uh to, to to build into your teams but we're seeing a lot of like eveltal metagross stuff kind of popping up which was popular cause from from previous generations and i think those are just going to continue where am i going to put it though i think tie in with kyogre is where i'm going to put it okay there we go okay right there's eveltal next one zygarde zygarde's a different a different beast altogether it's had some kind of hindrances in this format it's lost extreme speed which it used to have access to which is a little bit of a shame it still gets access to coil low which is a nice option for it boosting those uh, defenses and accuracy it gets a really nice uh, ground type attacks you've got a thousand arrows is probably the one that you want to use because it can hit flying types ground them that turn then hit them for good damage the next turn it's got a really good ability in power construct and aurora break as well which uh, negates the effects of dark aura and fairy aura from eveltal and xerneas so that can be something you can take advantage of as well power construct though at 50 50%. Um, when Zygarde hits 50%, it changes to its complete form uh, and gets a huge buff to its uh, to its um, HP stat. Uh, let's see if I can pull up complete Zygarde. Here we go. So where we go from um, 108 base HP, you go to 216. And that isn't even Dynamaxed. So you can Dynamax this thing after it hits its complete form and just go to town. Gonna see things like Misty Seed on it, which give it a little bit more defensive boost. Um, you've got a thousand arrows, you've got Wiz. You don't really have the Swagger Spam that you kind of had with Tapu Fini in previous generations, uh, but you do have Coil. Um, it does get Dragon Dance, which is a way to kind of boost its attack if you want. Um, it's got some other moves. It's got access to, to Haze, Glare, some support options there. Um, obviously, Dragon type attacks as well, which is going to be useful. Its coverage isn't the best overall, but it's got a lot of good utility in general. Um, very good Pokemon. I think it's something that's kind of been a bit overlooked. And um, I think it's a Pokemon that can have a real impact in this format. Again, it comes back to um, the fact that Steel types are kind of dominant in this format and there isn't that much Fairy out there that can really threaten it. Ice types as well are having a hard time with all of the Steel types. So for that reason, I think I'm going to slot Zygarde into A tier. And I don't know if there's many people out there that would agree with me, but I think as the format goes on, we're going to see more and more Zygarde in this format. And I think it can be a real, a real good uh restricted option going forward i think it's going to be very good i don't think it's going to be quite as dominant as these these four at the moment but i think it's going to be a very strong option okay next up we're going to be moving into generation seven which is 
Sogaleo, Lunala, and its counterparts. Sogaleo, very interesting Pokemon. Psychic and Steel type Pokemon. Uh, great base speed, again. Um, very good Pokemon. Only issue is it ties with one of its biggest enemies, Nemesis is, is uh, Urshifu. Um, so it speed ties with that, which isn't great. It's got a great ability then, Full Metal Body, which prevents, it's a bit like Clear Body, prevents any stat drops from opposing Pokemon onto Sogaleo. Got a great signature attack and Stun Steel Strike ignores abilities on other Pokemon, which is incredible. Uh, it got access to Trick Room as well. Uh, you're gonna commonly see it with weakness policy, taking advantage of that ridiculous speed stat that it's got there and with something like Baldo support it's very 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 good got a huge attack stat and got decent defenses special defense not so good but kind of made up with that 137 hp stat which is just incredibly big and then you dynamax this thing and it gets yeah it's it's very difficult to deal with especially because you can't intimidate it so you to to weaken it you're looking at things like will-o-wisp faster will-o-wisp would be something to to help it out but you're probably going to see it commonly paired with things like Tepfini to prevent that so it's it's gonna it's a tricky pokemon to deal with and you can't let it get too out of control gets amazing coverage you can see close combat is an option you've got earthquake you've got um flare blitz i mean the coverage is just incredible zen headbutt rock slide stone edge I think it gets wild charge as well wild charge i mean the coverage is just absolutely ridiculous on this you can go a little bit more supportive if you want something like help and hand on there to support partners and wide guard one of the better options in this format and something i think a lot of uh, players are sleeping on right now there's so much spread damage attacks in this format wide guard is going to be something that is very very important so i think there's utility there for that reason as well sogaleo uh very useful with that move as well not the only reason it's a very good pokemon but for that reason i'm going to throw it into tier a i'm very close to putting it into tier the s tier though because i think it's a very good pokemon in general not quite there lunala okay counterpart is a ghost psychic type i think uh four times a week to dark immediately screams help to me uh shadow shield as its ability it's a bit like multi-scale for uh lunala where full health it takes half damage from any attacks uh got really good stats across the board defense not so good but again supported by that huge 137 hp stat got good special attack um speed's not bad as well speed time with urshifu not so good um gets options like trick room i think it's lost tailwind now which is a very disappointing thing for it but it gets options like trick room which could be useful uh it's got really good coverage moon Geist beam is a really nice option as well it's a bit like the counterpart to sunsteel strike ignores abilities from opposing pokemon uh dazzling gleam it gets lots of options uh heat wave um gets trick will-o-wisp so it's got some nice utility support options but do you really want your restricted just being solely support and i think that's probably what lunala would be in this format i don't see it being so offensive because again it falls back into the the psychic kind of argument uh ghost slow ghost type argument where i think it's it's going to struggle in this format and i don't think it's got the kind of um the ability to work as well in this format as previous ones. I could be wrong, but I think what I'm going to do is stick Lunala top of C because I don't really see it being played that much. I think it's going to be very difficult to utilize. I think there's better options and I think, yeah, we'll put it in C. Okay, so we've got the, the babies, Cosmog and uh, Cosmium. Up next, do we even look at them? I don't know. We'll put them in D. I think we'll just skip on. We're getting on in this video. We need to save time. I love these Pokemon. Very cute. Not going to do anything. Don't use them. Don't waste your time. And I think we can do the same for Necrozma as well. I think it falls into the same category as Curum, where you've got better options in, in Dawn Wings and Duskmane, which are the next two that we're going to look at. Um, Dawn Wings is probably, I think, falls into the same category as Lunala, unfortunately. The Psychic Ghost type, and it does get Prism Armor, which uh, Pokemon receives. Third of damage from super effective attacks. Uh, sorry, three, three quarters damage from super effective attacks. So, I mean, it's a good ability, but when you've got a four times weakness kind of paired with that, 
it makes it very difficult to utilize. Uh, it's got good uh, distribution of stats. Um, it loses a bit of its HP stat, which is not so good compared to Lunala, and loses a lot of speed, which makes it a bit more uh, better to use in Trick Room, but I don't think slow enough to really utilize Trick Room, and there's a lot more stronger Trick Room threats now that I think will give it a, a harder time. It's got good defenses, of course, got good special attack. Um, it's got all the same options that you would get with, uh, except Y Guard. Doesn't get Y Guard, huh? Like Lunala. Uh, that's that's interesting. It gets Trick Room, though, which is very good uh, support and option, especially for a Ghost type. If you can position it well, you can always get your Trick Room up, not worried about um, something like uh fake out to kind of stop you uh moon guys beam it gets that signature attack it gets really good coverage earth power um it gets expanding force that you can take advantage of heat wave um I, iron defense is an option there it gets recovery in moonlight as well morning sun it gets a uh, photon geyser as well which is a nice attack so i think don't wings necrozma um probably not as bad as Lunala, uh, probably just, yeah, I'd say probably a little worse than Lunala, but probably better than, probably better than these, but probably I'd say I'd prefer, I think Groudon's better than it. Uh, I'd say Groudon's better than Lunala as well in this format. Maybe Groudon goes up to B, I don't know. I think Groudon, actually, I think we're going to move Groudon up to B. Yeah, I think Groudon up to B. I think we were too harsh on it earlier. So move Groudon up to B. Duskman Necrozma, different story altogether. I think Duskman Necrozma is one of the best Pokemon that you've got in this format. Prism Armor, Psychic Steel typing, incredible typing. Prism Armor, getting that defense boost from, well, not a defense boost, but taking less damage from super effective attacks with the defenses that it's got across the board, which are 97, 127, 109 special defense, really balanced and an incredible attack stat. Again, suffering from a little bit of a, an awkward speed tier, not quite slow enough to take advantage of Trick Room fully, not quite fast enough to take advantage of the faster mod. So it's somewhere in between, but can definitely set its own Trick Room up a bit like, um, Dawnwing's Necrozma, uh, it's got access to Sunsteel Strike, it's going to primarily be something that you're going to see weakness policy on because of that Prism Armor and once you max this Pokemon um, and get that plus two, it's going to be incredibly difficult to stop. It gets access to Earthquake as well, which is incredible. That combination right there, Max Steel Spike, Max Quake, boosting those defenses on top of like plus two uh, attacks that is just insane. It gets access to some really nice moves. It gets fought on Geyser if you want the, the Psychic type stab as well with that. Set the Psychic terrain if you need it. Um, it gets, yeah, it's got very good coverage in general. Stone Edge, um, gets expanding force if you want to go down a special route which you can do um obviously it's got just a bunch of things gravity uh in prison um so it's got utility as well with it but i think just in general you're probably wanting to go more of a physical attacker it is very prone to intimidate though but you can you can kind of mitigate that you've got plenty of pokemon in this format that can uh punish intimidate cycling defiant tornadoes being one of them melodic something that might see a bit of use i don't know how much but thunderous definitely something to take a look at uh got to be careful around the dark types again that's the one bit of a drawback for it uh the dark types are going to give it a hard time and ghost types as well but with the prism armor i think it's a very good option I'm kind of tempted to throw it up into A because I do think it's one of the best Pokemon in the format in general. I don't know if it's I'd probably better than Sogaleo in my opinion just because of the fact that it's got Prism Armor that it can rely on it. It's got Trick Room as well. I think Trick Room is generally just a very good utility in this format. Um, I'm going to throw it up into S tier. Have I got too many Pokemon in S tier? Have I got too many Pokemon? I mean I could move, if I moved anything I think I'd probably move Palkia down into A. But I do feel very strongly about Palkia being in S because I think it's a very good Pokemon. Although you can't you can't really have this many Pokemon in S tier. You cannot. We cannot have okay, we're gonna refine this at the end. We cannot have this many Pokemon in S tier. Um because yeah, I'm gonna have to move I'm gonna have to put some of these in S tier as well. Um which is just not not gonna be the way to do it. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna rejig this now. <sighs> I think Palkia goes down to A tier. Kyogre, are you going to go down to A? No, I can't. I can't. I think 
Necrozma may have to go down to A tier as well. Yeah. And... Yeah, it has to stay in that order. Okay. Yeah, so I think that's what we're going to go with. Right, Zacian and Zamazenta. Two of the new Pokemon that got Sword and Shield. Zacian. Incredible Pokemon. We'll go with the Crown Form. Obviously, you've got normal Zacian, but you're going to go with the Crown Form. Give it the Rusted Sword. It's going to get that Crown Form and the Steel Typing added to its Fairy Typing, which makes it just incredible. Uh, Behemoth Blade is a move that turns from Iron Head, I believe, when you give it the Rusted Sword. So uh, the, the beauty about this 100 base power um, and damage doubles against anything that is Dynamax. So you're going to get double damage against Dynamax Pokemon. So you're going to get the same damage, whether they're regular or Dynamax, which is incredible. Uh, Intrepid Sword as well, one and crazy ability. Anytime that Zacian enters the field, it gets an attack boost, which is just ridiculous because you look 170 base attack stat and 148 speed stat. One of the fastest restricteds in the format, which is just nuts. Uh, it's got decent bulk across the board in general um, 115 on both 92 HP so it's got the ability to not be like this glass cannon kind of Pokemon it's got the ability to kind of have a little bit of bulk um, and definitely the speed and the attack which you can kind of if you can position it well against like intimidate users you can get the attack boost so you can maybe take a little bit out of attack um, um, and then make use of it that way obviously you've got access to things like play rough like close combat they're going to be the kind of main three moves that you're going to see. Substitute's quite popular on it. Um, Swords Dance as well is another option that you've got there. It's got a lot of options that it can take advantage of in this format. Crunch, uh, another option if you need the dark type coverage. Um, quick Attack as well. Uh, it might not be something super obvious, but it could be good to chip sashes and things like that. Wild Charge, another option. Uh, Brutal Swing, another option to proc potential weakness policies and things like Metagross, things like uh, Dustman, well, not Dustman Cosma, but Metagross. Um, you would like uh, Dustman Cosma maybe with this. It's got Imprison as well, which is a nice option. Quick Guard. Um, so it's got a lot of like support options that you can kind of look at and maybe take advantage of in more of a niche scenario, helping hand as well. Um, but generally just an incredible Pokemon, great typing as well. And that speed stat just puts it like, it just makes it stand out from the rest of the Pokemon. The only drawback is with it is it can't Dynamax and um, it does give a lot of emphasis on your team building. I think... Um, Zacian is probably one of the best Pokemon, I think, restricted-wise that we've got access to. Um, and I think it frees up team building quite a lot. It makes team building hard because you're not really, like, you haven't got a dedicated powerhouse. Like, something like maybe Dialga. It works in a completely different way to Dialga. But the, what Zacian kind of provides teams is uh, a way to hit Dynamax Pokemon very hard. And uh, Steel Fairy. We've seen how good that typing is in general. Um, fairy typing, the Rint. Isn't that many good Fairy typings in this format? You've got Xerneas and then you've got your Unrestricteds. But how many of them are we going to see? And I think Zacian... Even though like play rough isn't the most common option on it, I think it's a decent option at least to consider. There's a lot of dragon types in this format, um, and the coverage that you get between uh, steel, fairy, and uh, fighting it's it's pretty nice coverage overall. So it's uh, definitely something to consider. I would definitely and why I've rejigged. I would stick uh, Zacian into S tier 100, and I think I'd probably put it above. I put it above everything, I think. I think I'm going to actually rejig as well. I think I'm going to put Hivelto. Yeah, there. I think above Kyogre. And then Dialga. Because I do feel, still feel like Dialga are going to be very strong in this format. Zamazenta. Okay. Counterpart Pokemon. I think Zamazenta. You've got Zamazenta crowned. It's fighting steel. It's got a decent uh, typing for sure. The steel typing is always good. You've got the rusted shield there. Dauntless shield rises defense by one whenever it switches in. It's got uh, a ridiculously good defense stat. Attack stat, not bad either. Good defenses across the board. Uh, and speed, not bad. Speed, not bad. You know, uh, if you're going jolly, you're still hitting a very good speed stat. You're under speeding base 130s, which is a little bit... Um, 
it's not ideal. It's not ideal, but it's got nice options in coaching, something that we've seen recently. Uh, Behemoth Bash is its kind of signature attack, which is, uh, again, a steel type attack like Behemoth Blade. So it's got that option there. Close combat, you're going to get stabbed from that as well. Um, again, it's got some nice options throughout. If you can see, it's got Play Rough as well, so you can take advantage of that if you want. It's not stab, but it's definitely there. Wild Charge as well. It's more defensively built. Um, and whether or not it's something that, you know, it's got wide guard as well. So wide guard, you know, it's a perfect support and Pokemon as well with the defense boost. And it's still going to be hitting hard with Behemoth Bash um, and other options like your stab option, close combat. I think it's something that's been a little bit overlooked and it's not as it's not as kind of dominant as uh, and as obvious as how strong Zacian can be. But I think Zamazen is actually a really good Pokemon in this format. Um, and I think we'll see more of it being played the further we go into this format i honestly think we'll see a lot of it um it's got decent typing and then it resists dark typing uh which is really nice um it's not weak to psychic it's not weak to fairy because of the steel type in there so you know it's got a lot of utility in general i think i'm going to put it top of this is another one I don't think many people are going to agree with me on, but this is one that I think we'll come back to. And I think if not, it's verging on to me, just looking at how it could perform in the format. It's verging on being maybe an S tier Pokemon, but I would definitely say it's an A tier Pokemon for sure. 100%, 100%. That's where we're going to go. Zamazenta. I think it's a very good Pokemon. And I would like my one take on it would be don't overlook it because I think the ability to have the wide guard for one which is incredible i don't think zassian gets wide guard does it and i don't think yeah you wouldn't want to use it on zassian anyway you want the more offensive variant but i think the fact that it's got really good options throughout to support teams the only drawback is right and we'll see it right now is where's body press it's like where is body press I think it would be too broken with body press. Maybe why they said, we're not going to do that because Zamazenta is going to be everywhere and we want to see Zacian everywhere. Which is a little bit of a shame, but I think the more players are kind of twig on to some of the abilities that Zamazenta can provide for your team, as well as being an offensive threat, um, I think it can do a really good job, in all honesty. And I think it's not something to overlook. I'm going to put it at the top of A for sure. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on. Calyrex. 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 I do like you. Uh, Calyrex. Psychic Grass type. Unnerve ability. Uh, defend. Oh, I mean, sorry, the, the, the stats are just, yeah. They're not really what you would see from a restricted Pokemon. So for that reason, we're not even going to discuss it. We're going to just dump it. D tier. Bottom. D tier. Calyrex. Now we'll get on to the better Calyrex forms. We'll start off with Calyrex. Which one have we got? The Shadow Rider, the Knight Rider himself or herself or themselves, whichever one we're going for. So Calyrex, when fused with Spectre, creates Calyrex Shadow Rider. This is one insane Pokemon, I will say. I love these new Pokemon, these new fusions. They have the ability as one. They have Unnerve and they have Chilling Nair. Or, uh, this one has Chilling Nair anyway, which is just, uh, sorry, Grim Nair, which boosts uh, attack. A special attack when you knock something out, which is amazing. Uh, then we come over to the stats. Uh, 100, 100 HP, 80, and then 100 special defense. Not the best defensively. I will say not the best defensively. Um, it falls into the Mewtwo requires a kind of category, very glass cannon-y sort of Pokemon. Not going to be able to take big hits, uh, especially because of that four times weakness to dark types. Uh, I think that makes things very difficult for it to perform against certain Pokemon in this format, namely Urshifu, uh, Eveltal, another one, Moltres, Glaring Moltres, another one. But being the fastest restricted Pokemon in the format gives it a huge advantage against a lot of pretty much everything else in the format restricted wise and 165 special attack as well, which is ridiculous. Um, it gets expanding force, which is just nuts. It gets its new signature attack, Astro Barrage, 120 uh, damage, ghost type attack, special attack hits both targets double like spread damage which is just nuts you know and you pair that with something like life orb and then you have expanding force and then you have something like mud shot here where you can just hit 
like Incineroar for huge damage. Turn one, knock it out. If it hasn't got the Shucker Berry, well, even if it has the Shucker Berry, it can't use it because of a nerve. So, I mean, it's amazing utility. It puts on so much pressure and we go back to why I've put some of these uh, ghost types, psychic types down in these tiers because I just think when you've got something as prevalent as Shadowrex Calorider, uh, Calyrex Shadow Rider, if we get it right, um, I think it's just very difficult for a lot of Pokemon to uh, to really gain any sort of momentum here. And then you pair it with something like Indeedee, which is its like new best friend with Follow Me, Psychic Terrain. I mean, the only things that you have to worry about are those dark types, and there is a handful of those that you can you can definitely have other things in your team to help prepare against. So I think we've seen how good Spectria Clefairy was as a as a combination in Series Seven. Now I think this this format series eight calyrex and dd is going to be extremely extremely hard to uh to take to 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 deal with gets access to lots of support moves as well taunt will-o-wisp gets access to trick room as well which is just madness so i mean the list goes on for the options that it's got uh aromatherapy could be something that's useful i guess i've seen a few here's it gets very useful move here's uh for like just shutting down things that are trying to boost up and get an advantage over you uh <clears throat> we'll not talk about ally switch but it does get it Heal Pulse is another one, Helping Hand, so in prison as well. Um, so you've got Trick Room in prison. You've got so many options with it. It's actually ridiculous. Like, And I think as a Pokemon in general, I think the only thing that lets it down is its typing because of the darkness weakness. And I think the other thing that lets it down is its defense is slightly weak. So, I mean, it's a great candidate to have screen support with. But I don't think it's, uh, yeah, I'm going to throw it into A tier for now because I think it does have some drawbacks, although I do think it's top of A tier for the moment. So that is where we're going to go. Uh, I'm rethinking my S tier all the time. I'm like, is that right? Can 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 we not put Shadow Rider in A tier and then move Kyogre down to, I yeah, you know what? You know what? I think I have to, as good as Kyogre is, I think Kyogre down here, I think... I think Calyrex Shadow Rider is better than Kyogre. Yeah, I'm going to go with it. I'm going to go with it. And it makes no sense. We're getting right to the end of this. And, you know, it's going to change throughout. But I'm quite happy with everything right now, I think. And I think I put Calyrex. I think I put it probably above. Yeah, I put it just below Zastian, I think. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm going to do. That's where it's gone. Okay. Calyrex Ice Rider. We're nearing the end, friends. If you're with me at this stage, we're nearly there. It's got the As One ability instead of Chilling, um, instead of Grimnir. It's got Chilling Nair, which boosts attack. Um, it's got actually one of the the best defensive spreads I think of any restricted. It's got terrible typing, defensively. Great typing offensively um it does have a dark weakness added to it now a ghost weakness added to it now which isn't ideal but at the same time it's got absolutely amazing defenses 100 hp 150 defense 130 special defense is just absolutely nuts and then 165 attack stat which is just incredible good speed stat as well and a good speed stat of base 50 can take advantage of trick room really well and can kind of perform out of trick room a little bit better so it can hit things like amoongus a bit more safely out of trick room get rid of it if you are seeing like minimum speed trick room uh, amoongus being a thing and um, so it's got very nice options overall it's a great candidate i feel for something like assault vest um you can go life orb which i've been playing around with and it's got that signature attack which is <sighs> don't know why they ever invented this move but this is ridiculous this is the one thing that i just think is madness if you life orb this thing glacial lance is a spread ice type attack 130 base attack uh hits both targets and with a life orb if you get any sort of uh chilling near boosts as well i mean it's just wiping out things there's not very much even resist this stuff is going to take stupid damage from it um and if you can just control the field like i do really think there's an argument do you just run glastria over this but i think the difference between glastria and calyrex ice is you get glacial lance and i think just for the ability to absolutely 
just keep that momentum going. You don't even need to think about 50-50s in an endgame situation. Is one thing going to protect? Is the other thing going to protect? You've just got the ability to just absolutely blitz through things and just click Glacial Lance. It's so easy if you just keep the speed control. And for that reason, I think uh, Calyrex Ice is just a generally amazing Pokemon. It uh, Obviously, with its psychic typing as well, it does now get access to Trick Room. So it can set its own Trick Room up. Another partner uh, for, again, would be that uh, Follow Me female and Didi set the, the, the terrain up for you, give you redirection support, which is really nice. Allow you to set your trick room up and then start throwing some big damage out. It gets all the stuff that Glastria got, you know, uh, close combat. It gets that. It gets heavy slam, which is another nice option. So you've got loads of nice options here and some additional ones that you get from the the fusion with calyrex as well obviously leaf storm is an option mega horn i believe does it did it get that i don't know um uh, but yeah get some nice stuff generally going to be an incredible pokemon though and i think for my experience with it i'm going to throw it into tier a um it's going to have a hard time against the steels probably not as good as palkia uh, is it better than Palkia? I think it's better than Palkia, to be honest. I think it's better than... Nah, uh, it's not better than Duskmane, because I think Duskmane's just a, probably a little bit better than it. But it's definitely an A-tier Pokemon, and that's where we're going to... I'm going to put it. That's where I'm going to put it, and it's going to stay there. I don't think it's quite S-tier because of its typing. That would be my only drawback with it, but I think it's a very strong Pokemon in general. Okay, on to our last one. Our very last Pokemon, Eternatus. Eternatus only gets pressure as its ability. Uh, poison Dragon type. Um, unique typing for a restricted Pokemon. Not bad. Not bad at all. Doesn't need an item for any sort of forms or anything like that. Um, Base stats. All right. Okay. 140 HP. Incredible. 95 95 defenses across the board not too bad when combined with that hp stat 145 special attack very good and speed stat incredible for a restricted pokemon 130 could be a little bit better but are we asking for too much because we're getting a lot of faster uh restricted pokemon these days i think 130 is very acceptable uh the big thing about this pokemon is cosmic power and recover um and you're primarily seeing Dynamax Cannon and like Flamethrower. Dynamax Cannon and Flamethrower. But it does get access to things like Toxic as well. So it can actually be a Toxic Storm on between these three. Dynamax Cannon, a bit like Behemoth Blade and Behemoth Bash. It uh, doubles damage against Dynamax Pokemon, which is a nice option. Um, good base power as well, coming off that special attack. It obviously gets options like Sludge Bomb as well. The problem with Sludge Bomb and Dynamax Cannon, you kind of get a little bit walled by Steel types in general, which it does struggle with if you don't carry something like a Fire type attack, uh, Mystic Fire, Flamethrower. But, you know, you don't need to go down the Cosmic Power route if you don't want to it's got a lot of utility outside of that uh the recovery is always going to be nice it gets screen support it gets substitute fast enough to utilize it uh, it gets brutal swing to support with obviously the cosmic power we've touched upon a turner beam uh, which is like a uh, uh, hyper beam uh, dragon type hyper beam uh, i don't know if you'd ever really want to use that maybe it's an option there it doesn't get really it's not got the deepest of move pools in general get shadow ball um flash cannon is another option if you want to max it a lot of the time but i think generally it's quite a good pokemon with that speed stat as well it's gonna most of the time with cosmic power be able to get that up before uh, it can be attacked and you're gonna need specific like things that are gonna hit it very hard and remove it pretty quick from the field unless you have something like a haze user which is going to be invaluable against Eternatus you know something like a Moongus that can't um at least be one shot by it uh and can't um be poisoned either by something like toxic because I think the toxic stall on it is a really nice option especially with cosmic power I mean that is just it's just disgusting really but steel types is its big kind of drawback where it can't really do anything to steel types um so i think eternatus is very good um i'm a bit i don't know where to kind of put it i don't think it's an a tier pokemon i think it's probably b tier and i probably dunk it probably top of b tier i think i think yeah so there we go friends i think eternatus could maybe go into a i don't think it will though i think it probably stay b 
maybe around mid B. Um, but okay, there is the list. Wow, what a long video, what a long video. Thank you so much for sticking with me throughout this. Um, I've been very brief on every Pokemon, but there are a lot of restrictors to go through, so I can't go into so much detail about all of them. Obviously, we're going to have a lot of content coming out on the channel in the next few weeks, uh, discussing Series 8, so we'll be able to cover uh, more in depth a lot of these Pokemon in in those, in those videos and stuff like that. So, friends, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. It has been a lot of fun doing this. Let me know your opinions down below on what you think uh, of my tier list, uh, what your overall thoughts are, if you agree with with me on anything if you disagree with me on anything and it'll be nice i swear to come back in about three or four weeks time or maybe a couple of months time and have a look how well these predictions kind of pan out because it's never going to be 100 percent correct i don't think anyone that does these is going to be 100 percent correct there's always going to be that anomaly that out there but i'm kind of trying to be as conservative and give my use the experience that i've got over the years as, as best as possible to kind of put things in tears where i think they'll be good and where they'll not be so good so there'll be surprises there'll be stuff up there that's probably not as good as what i expect it to be but i think in general that is that so thank you so much for tuning in friends have a great rest of your day enjoy series 8 we'll be back with content tomorrow on the switch we'll have a brand new rental team to feature to kick us off into the new format which is going to be very exciting so i uh, hope you're looking forward to that have a great rest of your day whatever you're up to and i'll see you all for another episode very soon so until then take care see you next time bye bye